If a final restraining order is entered, there are certain things the defendant must do. The defendant will be fingerprinted and photographed. His or her name will be placed on a domestic violence central registry that is only accessible by court staff and police. They may also be ordered to pay a civil penalty that ranges from $50 to $500. They will also be restricted from ever having a firearm. Remember, obtaining a final restraining order is not a criminal matter and will not result in the defendant going to jail. If the defendant violates the contact provisions of the final restraining order, though, you should report that to the police and the defendant may be arrested. It is also recommended that you not have any contact with the defendant. If a final restraining order is entered, the judge has wide discretion to enter a variety of relief. The final restraining order will contain the same no contact provisions that were in the temporary restraining order. The defendant still cannot have any contact with you. There can be no phone calls, texts, or instant messages. The defendant cannot go to where you live or work and cannot ask third parties to have any harassing communication with you. If you believe there is someone in your life who also needs the same protection from the defendant, such as a child that is not a child of the defendant's or a close family member, you can ask the judge that the person be placed on the final restraining order as well. If you and the defendant share children, it is presumed that you will be the primary parent of the children. This means that unless the defendant presents significant evidence that this should not be the case, you will be the primary parent and the defendant may have parenting time. It is a good idea to think beforehand what specific parenting time schedule you would like the court to enter. This includes a specific place and exact times for pickup and drop off of the children. If you are concerned about the defendant's interactions with the child or children, you can request that the court order a risk assessment. A risk assessment is when court staff, at a date after the final restraining order hearing, question both you and the defendant separately about your concerns and desires for the other parent to be involved in the child's life. Regarding parenting time, you may request that it be suspended or supervised until the return of certain assessments. If the parenting time will be supervised, it is possible that the court may have a program for supervision, but that is not a guarantee. Therefore, it is a good idea to think beforehand about whether there is an adult in your life that you would trust to supervise the defendant's interactions with the child or children. If the defendant's parenting time will not be supervised, it is important to think about what schedule is most convenient for you. The judge will want specific pickup and drop off times and locations. These are very flexible, so you should think about what would work best for your children beforehand. If your concerns about the defendant's interactions with the children stem from a specific concern regarding the defendant, you may request that the judge order an evaluation. The judge can order a substance abuse evaluation, psychiatric or psychological evaluation, batterer's intervention, or even parenting classes. The court may order that the defendant has to complete these programs before visits can begin or become unsupervised. You may also request that the court order the defendant to pay you child support. You should bring proof of your income with you. For example, your three most recent pay stubs or a recently filed tax return. The court will also want to know what you pay to provide your child with health insurance or work-related daycare. If you pay for these services, you should bring proof of those costs with you. The court will enter this information into a computer program called the Child Support Guidelines and it will provide the amount for child support. The court will order that this payment be made through the County Probation Department. Also, if the defendant receives a paycheck, the court should order that the child support payment be taken directly from the defendant's paycheck. This is called a wage garnishment, and you can request that from the court. If you and the defendant shared a residence, you may request possession of the residence. If the residence is owned solely in the name of the defendant and you are not married, the court may not give you possession of that residence for an indefinite amount of time. You may ask the court to grant you a set amount of time, a couple of weeks or months, to give you time to find your own place to live. You may also request that the defendant be responsible for assisting with payments in your home, including rent or utilities. The court will try to ensure that you are not in a negative position solely because of the fact that you sought protection of a restraining order. If you and the defendant are married, you may be eligible for spousal support. 
If prior to the temporary restraining order, the defendant had contributed toward your marital lifestyle, you may request that the judge order the defendant to continue to contribute in the same way. It is important to remember that final restraining order hearings are considered summary proceedings. This means the court is not going to conduct a full hearing on issues of relief, but enters an order based on the limited information available at the time. Therefore, it may be necessary for you to file for more detailed relief in the future. It is a good idea to bring paperwork reflecting your income and bills if you are requesting this form of relief. Please remember, the court is not aware of your entire situation. It is therefore important for you to raise any issues that may be important to you. If property damage was caused by the defendant during a domestic violence incident, you may request that the court order the defendant to reimburse you for those costs. For example, to repair a windshield or replace a broken piece of furniture. Also, if you paid any money in order to go to trial, you can request to be reimbursed for those costs as well, including copying costs and payment to obtain medical records. You may ask the court for the return of personal property, keys to a car or home, or any other specific relief that will help to eliminate contact between you and the defendant and keep you safe. If you need legal advice or representation, you can see if you are eligible for our services by calling 1-888-LSNJ-LAW or completing our online intake at www.lsnjlawhotline.org.